Hi, uh, it's Tamara Khodova for That Shelf and today we are talking about Mark Milet's The Menu. Uh, I am in Berlin. Uh, it's very wintry, dark and gloom, which is very typical for Berlin in November. Um, and I am passing by a famous uh, breakfast cafe. Uh, Anna Blume, situated in the heart of a very beautiful uh, Berlin neighborhood, Prince Lauberg. Usually uh, in the summer, it's every day, and in the winter, um, on the weekend, you would encounter lots of people, the line, uh, waiting for their breakfast, their brot mit Käse und uh, Wurst, so it's like a historic place. And I live right next to it, just uh, like lots of wealthy families here. It's not like I'm wealthy, but usually uh, Prince Lauberg is known for being a place for Berliners who already want to settle down. Uh, coming back to the menu, uh, it's a very wonderful surprise in the end of the year. Uh, actually, uh, the menu, ed edgy social satire, uh, grossed $33 million worldwide. And it was the second opening, uh, it was the second um, high grossing film uh, on its opening weekend after Wakanda Forever. It grossed $15 million on the opening weekend, which is a pretty good result and uh, the best result for Searchlight Pictures movie since Slumdog Millionaire, Millionaire which um, came out in 2008. Pretty, it's doing pretty well, if you ask me, uh, especially concer uh, considering the disappointing performance of the recent titles. Uh, just like uh, Steven Spielberg's The Fablemans and uh, uh, Disney animated movie The Strange World. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but it feels like uh, it's a trend uh, this year to um, tear up uh, social structures and criticize the uh, the world of wealthy and rich. Uh, I could, from uh, the top of my uh, off the top of my head, I could think of the Triangle of Sadness by Ruben Asplund. It won Palm d'Or in Cannes, and um, uh, Ryan Johnson's Glass Onion, detective story, uh, which you can see in the theaters now. Um, all of his movies, including The Menu. Criticizing capitalist society. And for some reason, they're happening on the island. All of them. Uh, maybe it's the only suitable environment for tearing up uh, society's power structures. Who knows? So, the menu. It tells the story of a couple played by Nicholas Holt and Anya Taylor Joy. Um, Tyler and Margot. They are going to the tasting. Um, uh, in an exclusive restaurant on, owned by famous chef Slavic Blade by Ray Fiennes. Uh, and it happens on the island, as I've said, uh, where they meet other guests. Um, obnoxious food critic with your spineless editor uh, and uh, three extremely annoying tag bros. Uh, old uh, money couple uh, and uh, regular Slavic uh, restaurant. Uh, uh, the fading uh, movie star uh, and uh, his assistant and some secrets, uh, secret guests uh, about which I won't talk about uh, for the sake of a surprise. Uh, and of course, uh, Chef Slavic uh, is uh, making some peculiar dinner for them with a very, I would say, bloody surprises. 
the menu organizes uh, uh, the menu organizes the tasting not only for uh, their uh, The menu organizes the tasting not only for its characters, uh, but for the audience as well. It's uh, a nitty-gritty um, satire and dark comedy and a thriller and eventually a horror. Hand hurts. I'm gonna really keep myself somewhere here, I guess. Uh, the menu organizes the tasting not only for its characters but for the audience itself. It's a dark comedy, social satire, thriller, and eventually a horror. Uh, it is an open secret that uh, dinner will. Uh, go terribly wrong so the main source of entertainment comes from chef slavic ingenious uh, dishes that are aimed to fuck up with the, to fuck with the mind of uh, establishment in a very hilarious way one of the milets uh, Best known creations, TV show Succession, reminds uh, me of a cage with predators who are slowly devouring each other. The menu resembles more of a lab experiment uh, where um, rats are running in the maze trying to find the way out, and there is none. And the only thing that they can do is to submit to the will of sadomasochistic um, scientists and hope for his mercy. Uh, the writers um, are dedicated to the principle of uh, uh, one second I'll just go to some other uh, place that's not as loud uh, the writers use the classic principle of unity of space, place, and time, which is very typical for pandemic and post-pandemic movies, but then it, sometimes it can feel suffocating and monotonous. Uh, but in this case, it uh, works really well, actually. Uh, and the restaurant space works as this microcosm where different clusters social clusters can collide and try to coexist. Um, it, uh, the menu could serve as a metaphor for haute cuisine uh, and its chefs uh, who are more obsessed with their egos uh, more than they care about uh, making good food uh, or for any industry whatsoever, uh, film industry included. Um, Self-absorbed, useless critics who are ready to tear down work of others just to, to prove their worth. Uh, their editors who serve for the uh, god of hype. Uh, bored establishment uh, which wants attention and benefits but actually doesn't care about movies. Or investors who, and producers who always use, choose profit over art. Seems familiar, right? Uh, but um, uh, there is a great temptation to compare uh, the menu to the Triangle of Sadness as they both uh, criticize capitalism, uh, but the latter is much more scatter-minded, clumsy, and dull. No offense, Ruben. 
Uh, the menu elevates uh, from a typical satire which just spits the truth in the faces of the audience by placing Chef Slovak, this mad scientist, in the middle of it and making him part of his own game. Uh, his dinner is a path to redemption for himself included. And his tasting menu uh, consists of childhood trauma, greed, failed ambition, um, uh, and his his tasting menu consists of failed ambition, childhood trauma, greed, misogyny, um, hypocrisy, uh, and betrayal. Um, as good as this dinner gets, the dessert is inevitable um, and the ending of the menu would serve as a great ending for any Ari Aster's movie. Um, I won't elaborate any further uh, for the... Uh, I, won't, I won't elaborate any further to avoid any spoilers. But I think uh, the best thing is about the menu is that it's not a highbrow satire. Uh, it's very straightforward and frank uh, with it, uh, with, to, to its audience and to itself. And, and this is the best part about it because, well, it just encourages us to be frank with ourselves too. Uh, thank you so much for watching um, and I hope you can uh, watch uh, the menu too. It's a very nice treat. This was Tamara Khodova for That Shelf from Berlin. Bye!